What's up everyone? I'm the Kaishin Okami, and today I want to tell you about something that took me by surprise. Goosebumps. You remember those from the 90s, right? By R.L. Stein. Had a TV series, had a movie not too long ago, and an atrocious sequel? Yes. So, recently I was going through my Goosebumps collection. I mean, here I have the first 62 books. Well, all 62 of the original series. I've got six of the Tales to Give Yourself Goosebumps, which were all short story books. I'm afraid this is going to fall, so uh, bear with me, because most of these are first editions. So if I can avoid them getting any more damage than they already are, that's going to be great. And like this one's unfortunately torn there. And there are ones that are not in the best condition, like this, but Oh no, this is the first edition one. But... Which one? Monster Blood. This one's first edition because there's no number on there. And then some of them like Werewolf Skin comes with a mask. But yeah, so I have all 62 Goosebumps. The first six, which I don't know, that might be it all for that. And then I've got... A lot of the choose your own ending ones and then unfortunately because of my brother I only have two left of the 2000 series which kind of sucks but I only ended up having I only ended up getting I ended up dropping goosebumps around the time number third 12 or 13 came out for 2000s. Unfortunately, it turned out there were only like 12 more books after that. So if I had just kept going a little bit longer, I would have had the whole collection. Not that it probably would have mattered if, yeah. But so I was looking at filling some holes back in April, May of my Goosebumps collection. And I look online because I'm just like, well, oh, you know, let's go see how much these are. I mean, they're, they're books from the 90s. They can't... Maybe they'll be a little over retail, but probably not retail. I mean, depending on which book you look at. Like, the retail for Welcome to Dead House here is $2.95 US. Let's go to the last book here for that I have. This one is $3.99 US. So over the course of a lot of books, a couple years worth, it only went up about a little over a dollar. And yeah, two ninety-five. And I was like, well, I'm gonna fill up some holes. I go online. I'm like, what? There were some books that were like fifty dollars on that online on eBay. I'm like what the hell? Fifty dollars for a single book? Like what? That's insane. Why are they fifty dollars? Apparently some of them have never been reprinted. Uh, I guess like Monster Blood 4, I Live in Your Basement, Werewolf Skin has never been reprint reprinted before. And some of the Choose Your Own Ending books, um, especially the later ones, because I've got a missing number one, which sucked because that one was my favorite. The first was the best. I'm missing number 17, and then I dropped to 24, and I guess around uh, number 30, they never did more than one printing of those books for 30 through 40, whatever they are. But I'm like, what? the hell how did they get so expensive why is it that everything i have an interest in ends up becoming some big collector's value i just wanted to go along and get a few books to fill in holes in my collection and to get the entire goosebumps 2000 series it's like 350 dollars unless you want them like in very very bad condition like what and yeah, some of the 2000s are reprinted under their newer banner, but for me, 
I like the covers of the old stuff. I don't like the way they've done the new ones. I don't like how the new ones have never been... Like, even the new ones, they call it like classic, classic Goosebumps, and they have these really ugly covers. They don't... They've never reprinted every book. So, like, all 62 of these are not even in the classic series. They've got, I think, like, 20 of them. And it's w annoying because even audiobook-wise, they only have done audiobooks for, like, 15 Goosebump books. Like, what? when the hell did Goosebumps become such a collector's item? Why? I mean, okay, I, 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 they were great stories. Don't get me wrong. I loved them. Obviously, I loved them. I mean, this was part of my... This was part of my introduction to horror in fiction, in, uh, yeah, to horror books. The Curse of the Mummy's Tomb. This was my first Goosebumps book ever. It's not my favorite Goosebumps book, but it was a damn good one, and it got me into the series. Like, my top favorites... For this series. Now I've never I've not read every single book. I will say that. I have only I've read major the more than half the series, although they were decades ago. Um But I will say my favorites are The Headless Ghost. That might be my favorite Goosebumps book overall of the ones I've read. Because goddamn was that one so freaking engaging suspenseful, atmospheric. The characters actually felt like they were tr truly in danger. Same with Ghost Camp. Ghost Camp was another one. That might be my second favorite book. That book was very well written. Very suspenseful. Curse of Camp Cold Lake was another one that was well done. That one knew how to build itself up before jumping into the... Um, the scares and the and the suspense and everything because it's just build up, build up, build up, build up, and then boom. Welcome to Dead House. The first book is one of the best. Say Cheese and Die. Now I will say the Monster Blood series sucks. Those books seem to get progressively worse. And they're boring. The Monster Blood series, the Monster Blood tr quadrilogy is just bad. The first book was okay. The second book was meh. The third book was terrible. And I was like, okay, you can't get worse than this, right? And then Monster Blood 4 happened. And there were things that didn't make sense in the progression of those stories. Like the one female character in there, she her character arc didn't make sense after the first book. Werewolf Skin was an incredible one. I Live in Your Basement had some interesting uh, plot twists in there. Not the best. Not the best of them. That one took a while to get moving. One Day in Horrorland's really good. Ghost Speech is pretty good. Attack the Mutant was always a good one. Night in Terror Tower and Cuckoo Clock of Doom. Those were fun books. Those were enjoyable little time twisters. I like uh, Shocker and Shock Street. The one I've never read that I really wish I had. Um, the one I never read that I really want. Oh, Legend of Lost Legend and Attack of the Jack-O-Lanterns. Those were pretty good too. Um, the one I never read that I really thought, huh, I wonder how this is, was... Where is it? Wait a minute. Maybe it was a 2000s book, actually. Because there was one book that I really wanted to read. And I never did. So yeah, it might have been one of the 2000 books. But, anyway, it's, it's just so weird how these Goosebump books became such collector's items, became something sought after. I mean, 
They're good. Again, they're good. But what the hell? Why are these books so expensive? Why can't I just go online and order the ones I need to fill my holes for like two dollars, three, four dollars? Hell, I'll even do five dollars for some of them. But why? Why are they so expensive? What? Seriously. And even um, there's one local store called Second and Charles. I asked them if they had any Goosebump books there, and the employee said that. They have said they have collectors coming in every day seeing if new books have come in because they they don't last long. He said usually when we get them in, they're gone within the next day. Like, and I and it seems to be true because one of the times we went there, they had a couple books of these ones. Like they had Deep Trouble Two, uh, they had Monster Blood Four, and like two or three others and. The neck, we went in there like two, three days later and the, all the Goosebumps books were gone. So I was like, damn, he wasn't kidding. They don't last long. But yeah, so how could a series that had a terrible TV series, like some of the, some of the episodes, uh, we, like we've been watching some of the episodes because we've been doing some of the audio books for them, Corellica and I, and it's been like, did they even read the book when they wrote this episode script? Or did they just read the back, randomly pick like two or three pages to read from inside the book, and said, okay, we know what to do. We can, we've can. we got a TV script out of this. Like, Welcome to Dead House barely is anything like the book. They've rearranged scenes around and stayed out of the basement, added in their own aspects. Monster Blood, I don't even know what the hell they were thinking with Monster Blood. That was a complete bastardization of the story. So yeah, I don't know what they were thinking with those television episodes. If I recall, with the ghost speech and Attack of the Jack-O-Lantern episodes were just as atrocious. Welcome to Camp Nightmares episodes were bad. Like, Yeah, so the TV series was never good. I mean, the best thing to come out of that TV series was Ryan Gosling. So, yeah, I've said that like 20 times in this video. I'm just amazed at how much of a collector's value Goosebumps has been. Were you guys Goosebumps fans at all? Have, do you have a favorite book, a least favorite book? I would say, my, well, as I already said, my favorite book is The Headless Ghost. I think my least favorite book would probably be Monster Blood 4. It's just horrible. I don't know if I really should rank these books because a lot of them I don't have memories of and as I said, I haven't read them all. But... I don't know if I read Vampire Breath. I think I've only seen the TV episode for that. Same with uh, Calling All Creeps. I think I've only seen the TV versions for those ones. Night of the Living Dummy was interesting because the first one, Slappy isn't even the villain. The main villain, at least. But, whatever. Let me know about your experience with Goosebumps. Do you have all the books? Have you ever just decided to look them up online to see how much they're worth and go, What the hell? Because that's what I did. Let me know in the comments. Click like, subscribe, the bell notification, whatever else YouTube has you clicking on to support me. You can support me on Patreon, Instagram, Twitter, Discord, Facebook at Kaishin Okami, my website creativitybydesignllc.com, and there's a Kaishin Okami store where you can buy cool Kaishin Okami merchandise, creativitybydesignllc.com slash shop. There's also a link in the description below. Until next time, bye.